Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the embryology of the pharyngeal arches and I've simplified it in a way so that this difficult concept can be understood by people who have very little embryology knowledge. I have a previous video that introduces embryology for beginners and I recommend that you watch that if you are planning to learn a lot more about embryology because it'll help you understand your own uh, lectures and your, your textbooks that might have very difficult concepts and you, you might, uh, if you're finding it very difficult to get a grasp on the content. So all of my videos, are, I've made it so simple to understand so that even if you have no idea what's going on, you will by the end of the video. And today we're talking about the pharyngeal arches. It's essentially the head and neck embryology. So let's just get right into it by beginning at the beginning. We have a sperm and an egg that fuse and end, end up becoming a ball of cells called a blastula and that is at the uterine tube level. The blastula undergoes some more morphology and once it's in the uterine uh, cavity, it implants onto the uterine wall and with a process called gastrulation, you'll have these three germ layers and the three germ layers are what you were initially when you were first implanted on the uterine wall. So initially it was mum here, uterine wall, and then your inside layer was stuck to that, and then your middle layer was the next one, and then your outer layer was the outer layer. So your outer layer is the ectoderm, your mesoderm is the middle, your endoderm is the inner. And so what happens is that this flat disc ends up folding and so this is a simplification for this. So where we have an ectoderm here, we have ectoderm in blue, we have mesoderm in red, and endoderm in green. And this is just to outline that it ends up folding. So if we have a focus up on here, don't let any of this scare you, we'll go through it step by step, only focus on where, where I'm pointing. So over here, we have ectoderm in blue, in the solid squares, we have neural crest cells, and I'll talk about what they do. The noto notochord is in black, and again, this is a cross-sectional view. So we're cutting it in half, this way, and looking from above. So the notochord pretty much tells everything else what to do. It's the instruction cord. You can think of it in that way. In red we have the mesoderm again, and you can see that it's slightly differentiating into its three parts, and then endoderm in the green. And as we move along, they differentiate a bit more. The neural fold appears, where the neural plate is pinched off, and the neural crest cells end up going and meeting each other over here, until we finally have them pinch off, become your neural tube, the um, ectoderm, and the notochord is still there, the neural crest will end up coming off and becoming peripheral nervous system, among other things, and the uh, neural tube is your central nervous system. So because the pharyngeal arches, they're not just from a single layer, they have all three layer components, we need to talk about the, the layers and components of each part. So where the endoderm is mostly GIT, it also makes up a bit of a um, inner lining of the pharyngeal arches. But back to here, so we have in red the mesoderm, which is made of three parts. Paraxial mesoderm, which gives rise to somites, muscles. The intermediate mesoderm, which gives rise to kidneys and gonads. And then the lateral plates. So there are two lateral plates, and there is a parietal and a visceral. The parietal one is also known as somatic. The visceral one is known as splanchnic. Splanchnic ends up becoming blood vessels uh, and heart. And all of these somehow contribute to development of the pharyngeal arches. Okay, now, so let's look at this right here. It essentially is a view of this. So the face and lower. Face is here. So this is the view. 
Let's go through it because it looks like an alien, but this is the fetus at around 24 days, a bit older than 24 days. And now we're beginning to talk about things that you need to understand about the pharyngeal arches. So initially we have the frontonasal prominence. If you're ever not unsure about a term, you don't know what it means, just think about what the actual word is. So it's a frontonasal prominence because it's a prominence and it's a nasal part of it. Think about it that way and you'll easily remember these terms. So then likewise, with the maxillary prominence, it'll end up becoming the maxillary. Over here, we have the oropharyngeal membrane in blue, which is eventually um, degenerates away, leaving the stoma duum. And so, this is essentially a mouth. A way to remember stoma duum is where the mouth is, is because the mouth leads to the stomach and the duodenum. So stomach and duodenum combine are stoma duum. That's not an official way to think about it, but you can remember it this way and keep it to yourself. <laughs> Next, we have the mandibular arch and then the fa other pharyngeal arches there. So this is just to outline what the pharyngeal arches look like. It might be a good idea to go on Google and look up electron microscope images of what the pharyngeal image, uh, arches look like so that you can get a good idea of uh, what it really uh, would look like so that you can map it up in your brain. Okay, so this is the fetus and if we just take a cross section here, so if we cut it up and look at it this way, so we're cutting it up here and looking at it this way, we will have this. Now if you don't know what pharyngeal arches are, this is what we're going to be talking about and you'll, you'll understand it in your head. So it is made up of ectoderm which is colour coded blue endoderm which is color coded green and in between where it's all white that's mostly mesoderm so these are the arches these bulges these are the arches and we're cutting them and we're having the first arch over here the second arch the third arch and then the fourth and the sixth arch there's no fifth arch because it doesn't become anything it's a rudimentary structure we have the laryngeal opening here, that's the spinal cord at this level because we're cutting it here and then this is the same bit of the cord but just up here just so that you can get it in perspective. Okay, each pharyngeal arch has its own artery, has its own nerve and has its own cartilage. They all will become specific parts of the face and head and neck. The arteries are the aortic arches the nerves are cranial nerves and the cartilages are the specific cartilages which we will talk about soon. So this is just to get it in perspective of what the pharyngeal arches are. These dips are the pharyngeal clefts and these on the inside where the endoderm is are the pharyngeal pouches and these two will be discussed in a separate, in a separate video just to keep it very simple, for this video we're only discussing the pharyngeal arches. Okay, and this mesenchyme inside, so this mes mesoderm, the tissue, the white, that's made up of both mesoderm and neural crest. So these cells that migrate down around, they also make up a portion of the inside of the pharyngeal arches. Okay, but what do they make up? What does it all mean? Let's just look at what it looks like as a complete uh, project. When, <laughs> when you, the job is done, what do the arch arches represent? Let's focus over here. So initially where you have your specific arches, this is the end product. So the arch number one is made up of both maxillary and mandibular uh, processes, maxillary, which become, which have their own components here, which we'll talk about, and mandibular, which contains Meckel's cartilage. And that's important to know what Meckel's cartilage is. Uh, the th hyoid arch is the third arch, and then we have the fourth and the sixth one. So that is just to get it in perspective for what it was, because this is now what it is in you. 
So where we have the Meckel's cartilage, it disappears and it leaves behind a malleus, an incus and some cartilage. So to recap, arch one, pharyngeal arch one, it's made up of the trigeminal nerve, both the maxillary and mandibular arch, uh, nerves of the uh, branches of the trigeminal nerve. It does the muscles of mastication, temporal masseter pterygoids. It does the hyoid and the anterior belly of the digastric, as well as a tensor palatine and tensor tympani. In, with regards to bones, it does the premaxilla, maxilla, zygomatic, part of the temporal bone, and the mandible, malleus, and incus. So those are high yield points to know. Arch one makes up the pharyngeal arch, Number one makes up these. So, number two, pharyngeal arch number two. It is color coded here in blue and it ends up becoming, in terms of uh, muscles, does your muscles of facial expression because if you want to keep it simple, it does, if you want to remember it easily, facial nerve innervates the muscles of facial expression. And so that's a good way to remember it if you understand your cranial nerves. It also does the posterior belly of the digastric, the stylohyoid and the stapedius. And in terms of the bones, it does the stapes, the styloid process and most of the hyoid bone. Hyoid bone. So the, hy the hyoid bone, hyoid bone being here, pharyngeal arch contributes to the top portion of the hyoid as well as some of the ligament the stylohyoid ligament okay so now number three pharyngeal arch three is color coded here in purple it does the lower portion and the greater horn of the hyoid bone as well as the glossopharyngeal nerve and the stylopharyngeus muscle this is keeping it very simple Pharyngeal arch number four, just picturing it over here, you can see that it falls in the thyroid cartilage. It is blocked in with six because they fuse. So you can see here some of the thyroid cartilage is by given by pharyngeal arch six, as well as a cricoid cartilage. So keeping that in mind, there is no five because five, again, was a rudimentary structure. It was only a transient thing that doesn't end up contributing anything to this. So the, the arch four and six makes up the vagus nerve. Four gives the superior laryngeal branch, whereas arch six gives the recurrent laryngeal nerve. They do the cricothyroid, levator, palatine, constrictors of the pharynx and the intrinsic muscle of the larynx and in terms of cartilage they do the laryngeal cartilages so thyroid cricoid artenoid corniculate and cuneiform so again just looking over here it's color coded as to which pharyngeal arch that gives rise to which part of the final structure as a result of uh, development so again with Meckel's cartilage it disappears and leaves behind some important structures and all of them are just here written for you and if you want a copy of this board so that you can print out for your notes I've uploaded it to Facebook so you can just click the Facebook link and go to the page and then you can print it out and use it for your notes if you think it's useful if you have any questions or if you don't understand anything that we've spoken about, leave a comment in the description, in the comment section below, or send me a message on Facebook. I'm, I reply to all Facebook messages and will be happy to help you. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching.